Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Kane, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Wonderware California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today focused on Dream Report. After the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or email us at webinar at california.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenter for today's webinar, Tan Nguyen. Tan is the Wonderware California Product Specialist in Southern California. Mike Lapitan, our Northern California Product Specialist, will be joining us for the Q&A portion of the webinar. So for now, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Tan. Good morning, Tan. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending today's webinar, Learning 30 series on Dream Report. Again, my name is Tan Nguyen. I'm your local Southern California Wonderware Product Specialist. So let's get started. So for the next 30 minutes, I'll be going through a quick introduction to Wonderware California, who we are, what we do, and uh, Dream Report's features and benefits. Then I'm going to dive into creating and designing a one-page report with some of the Dream Report's built-in objects and tools. Let's get started with Wonderware today. We have now hold 42% of the global market share with over 1 million licenses installed uh, all over the world, making us the number one HMI on the market. We are the lowest risk data solution because we are the easiest to use with 30 years of seamless migration, allowing you to take an application from 30 years ago, uh, running on Windows NT, and run it on the current Windows 10 or Windows Server 2016 platform. Wonderware also provides local and global support, uh, being backed by Snyder Electric and 3,500 system integrators worldwide. We are easily scalable, taking operation uh, and growing it incrementally as the business demands. At Wonderware California, we have two local offices here, one in San Francisco and one in Irvine. So stop by and visit us when you get the chance. We also hold training and free hands-on getting started workshops at these locations. So Wonderware California has been providing local re application consulting and uh, industry expertise based on over 25 years of industrial automation experience. We also provide professional IT services to help you get started on your project. Um, based on uh, building servers and computers with Wonderware pre-installed, as well as visualized and uh, high availability systems. If you're looking for help on turnkey projects or programming, we have over 120 uh, system integrator partners to help you address that need. So here's a picture of our uh, local support team, so you can put a face to the name. They are all based in California and extremely qualified to help support your Wonderware needs. As you see right now, we have 100% rating on customer satisfaction, uh, which is amazing. And uh, these guys are amazing as well. We also have a user conference coming up uh, in May for three days in three different locations in Northern California to introduce you to the latest and greatest from Wonderware, uh, one of which is the InTouch and System Platform 2017 and all of the new features. So it's a, it's a major release that you cannot afford to miss. You also get a chance to learn how to uh, leverage the uh, industrial internet of things and the cloud um, in your operations as well as see some customers' presentations on uh, different successes that they've had, and uh, play around with some of the demos at our demo booth. Moving on to Dream Report. Dream Report design objective was mainly around the idea of being able to generate reports at will, including all the info you need from all the data sources without any help from the IT department, and then push that report out in a variety of different formats. Now, how does Dream Report work? The creation of a report only takes about four steps. The first one is connecting to one or many data sources, and then comes the design and configurations of the report with built-in objects and templates, and then generating that report and publishing it to uh, the desired format or uh, the right person and location. DreamPort also integrates natively with Wonderware products in real time and historical, using the built-in drivers for seamless integration with existing systems. In terms of connectivity, um, so aside from Wonderware, DreamPort also has 70 drivers that allows it to connect to other historians, HMI SCADA system, open communication protocols, open databases, um, and of course manual data entry as well. DreamPort web portal allows for easy self-configurations and uh, accessibility on the web, so you can get uh, access on your phone, um, as well as security features. Um, and interactive reporting also helps you to um, be able to set the time period and uh, be able to put in action buttons that will generate uh, the report as you like. Uh, 
So that is it for the PowerPoint presentation. Let me to jump into the demo side here and show you how uh, DreamReport works. Now, just to show you a little bit of the capabilities, uh, some of the things that DreamReport can do, I have a couple of sample reports here um, that was generated. And uh, this is one of uh, the report for a central pump station. As you can see here, we have, uh, you know, pump status. You can see the average flow. You can also um, see the graph of how uh, the storage tank level is um, throughout the time. This is a period of a day. We also have widgets. Um, so being able to see um, your, your numbers in a couple of different ways, as you can see here with the minimum temperature, you can have, you know, a, a temperature gauge that uh, is really nice and colorful. Um, and then you have in the different maximum and minimum levels here uh, for the tank. And then you have a report that does, you know, equipment um, statistics. So you get equipment availability reports uh, that shows you, you know, when and how often that uh, equipment was available, um, uh, how often it runs and stops, what's the running time, the system availability time. And then you have, you know, reports based on batches as well. So you can pull out a batch ID um, and then analyze um, the data inside that batch, being able to get out the tank um, level, maximum, the time of the max, the minimum, and the averages. Um, and then putting that on a chart and being able to see uh, the different tank performances as well. Uh, we also have pie graph and, and bar graph here. And uh, another feature is the alarm analysis report, being able to uh, take in your alarms, um, the count of the alarms, the time, and as well as the percentage of each kind of alarm, breakdown by priority. Um, so alarm reporting is an extremely useful tool that you can use. Another one of the report production for a uh, production plant. Um, we have two different tanks here. You can see the tank level um, as well as the performance. And then the last one I have to show you is a reactor report um, that we're going to create today. So this is um, we're going to be using a reactor demo, and so we're pulling uh, information from that to create this uh, reactor report. Let me make it a little bit easier here. So we'll be creating a some statistic tables, step tables, and uh, a graph, as well as using some of the widgets. All right, so let's dive into the Dream Report uh, hands-on portion. So for the project name, we're going to name this one Webinar. Um, this, let's open this up. Um, it's going to take us to the, um, the wizard which is a new feature for Dream Report. It allows you to uh, configure and do all your configurations throughout the wizard. I'm not going to use the wizard today. We're going to do everything manually. Uh, you quit the wizard, and the first thing will pop up will be the communication configuration. Um, this is how you connect to different drivers uh, or different uh, sources of information. So we have a couple of ways to connect, a couple of different uh, brand manufacturers here. And of course, we have you know open communication protocols um, so being able to connect to the different uh, databases, um, as you see here, to get historical values and historical alarms, uh, you connect to, uh, you know, through an OPC DA um, connection to get real-time values and real-time alarm. Uh, you can also put it, uh, put in a CSV or a text value uh, as well, and uh, and then you have BACnet here. And then we have a variety of other connection. Um, all categorized into their own folders, so very easy to find and locate. And of course, we have our own folder for Wonderware here. So we have uh, the ability to connect to, you know, in touch historical values, so LGH files. We have a suite link protocol um, here and um, application server, if you, uh, you can connect to that and then store in alarms. Today, um, what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our uh, Wonderware historian. We've been storing data for uh, uh, the better part of this morning, so we'll be able to use some of that data to uh, to make a report. So first thing um, is to give a driver a name. So I'm going to call it W Historian, and then uh, configuring the driver, uh, you can connect to a Historian in different locations. If you go to a remote computer, um, our Historian is actually located on the local uh, computer here. So um, just to test out the authentication to make sure everything works. So you get a test connection succeeded. We're going to draw out the history values uh, from our local historian here. 
click OK, and then Add to add the uh, historian. So these are the defined drivers. Um, once you define a driver and you put it in here, um, you have the right ports for it and the right uh, data source, uh, you can use it continuously over the report. Let's click OK, and we're done with the driver connection. Next, we're going to do some uh, report settings. So going into report settings, we can rename the report. We we'll name this one reactor report. You can put a description to report if you have multiple that are the same. And then we have a report time definition. This setting allows us to output the report at any given time that we set, or any, uh, or, you know, at a certain time of the month, or yearly report, or do an execution um, for report every hour, or every minute, or every second. If if you have to go down to that granularity. And then we can also generate reports on events. So if something happens, you can also enable generation on the event uh, and putting in the data source uh, so that way it can trigger that event. We have different report file format as well. Um, so we have a, a PDF um, format here. In the PDF, you can also set up securities for the PDF file um, so that you would need to put in a security, a password, in order to open the file. Uh, this is great for security purposes. If you don't want your PDF getting to the wrong hands or sending to the wrong address, you can also um, have a web report here um, and being able to, you know, refresh the page as needed. Um, and then, we, of course, we have Excel reporting as well. And uh, I'll go over that in a little bit once we're, we finish with uh, our report design here. And, of course, you can also email, print, and uh, require signature, different orientations for your report. Okay, so that completes the report settings. Next, um, we're going to design the background for this report, make it look nice. So you can set a background color here, or you can go to a background picture. Um, inside of Dream Report, it comes with actually some very standard uh, background images, icons. So these come kind of uh, default. I've actually put in uh, a couple of my own. So we have one here for Wonderware California. So with this report, um, that's all we have for the background. The next thing I'm going to add is uh, I'm going to use a uh, what we call a dynamic text um, object. So over on the right-hand side here, we have a variety of different objects um, that you can use for the, your Dream reports. Um, so these objects help you create a report. And just as the name here for the dynamic text implies is that this, uh, this object name is based on the report name. So here I name it reactor report. So once I put in this dynamic text, it's going to change the name of the text without me having to type it in all the time. So it's a great feature to have. You can also type in your report name if you want to put in a text box. Um, that's perfectly fine, too. You can also insert pictures up here at the top. Um, if you want to put in a, a logo or some kind of picture, you can use that as well. So to insert anything inside a Dream report, uh, you can just draw the report, and uh, you can see here yeah, that we can select a couple of different type of dynamic text, um, whichever one we want to do. We can actually put one for a current user as well uh, if you have people log into Dream Report and, uh, and submitting reports. So it's really hard to see right now. Um, so you can change the color here to uh, a certain color, and then you can also change the size of this text. So that, that way it's easy to see. See here, it comes out in a kind of a coding. So the next thing I'm going to add is a uh, date and time object. Um, this date and time object allows you to um, put in a date and time where the report was generated. Of course, the objects usually come with an object name, help you define what the objects are. I will do this one at the, uh, the report generation time. From, uh, so a couple of different time formats here you can set, um, depending on what you like to do for your time format, a lot of different kinds here. Um, the one I use the most is the project localization. This gives me the opportunity to just use the, uh, the time frame that I'm on right now that my computer is on, uh, so it's easy for me to, uh, to run my report and not have to worry about the time zone. And time definition, um, being able to do an absolute or relative period of time as well as this fixed period of time. So we can do like last hour for fixed period. You can also do it by batch space 
and uh, calculate time. You see this option everywhere as we go through today on the time definition. So again, this is really hard to see. Change it to white. All right. Keep at the top there. As you notice, it will change. Every time I click on it, the seconds will change. So it updates. Next, we're going to add a single data object. So this is, uh, allows me to see my uh, just one point that I'm trying to see. So the first point I want to try to see is uh, the object name for the reactor, React Temp. From the data source, this is where you select where you get your data from. Um, we're going to use the external history server today because we put in the historian earlier. So selecting that, you can go to W Historian. And from here, we have a variety of different kinds of tags, um, analog discrete event tags. I'm going to use an analog tag, and there's a tag called React Temp. You can also type in the item name here in the data source if you know what they are. I'm going to do a fixed period. I'm going to do the last 30 minutes. Appearance is where you get to put in the values, um, so you can select a unit to add to the result. So here we have reactive temp, so we can go down and select a temperature value here. Precision gives you how many decimal points you want to go into. And then uh, here the result is shown as uh, I'm going to use a widget. So when you display as a widget, you get a chance to pick from a couple of different widgets here. Um, I'm going to use the digital display, resolution is 5, color is green. You can also change coloring and size. So click OK, and we have our nice little widget here. You can also um, copy an object and as well as paste the object. So that way you get multiple objects, and then all you have to do is reassign it um, a different name and a different tag. Uh, so this is one going to be reactor level. I'm going to pick a different tag. Keep everything else the same. This is going to change the gallons. Click OK. And then I'm going to duplicate it one more time to get my third one here. And this one's going to be the product level. Go in here, click the right tags. And for this, also change it to gallon, click OK. So you have a couple, we have three here. Also, you can space them out uh, evenly. There's a couple options up here that allows you to align them all. Uh, so you can center align them. You can make them all the same size. Uh, and then you can also um, do spacing in between them too. So make sure that all space is about the same. And drag and move them around a little bit, make it nice and neat. Next thing we're going to add is we're going to add a I was just going to say your audio went really quiet. I don't know if you need to put your... Oh, that's weird. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because I've been speaking the same, so I apologize if anyone didn't hear me. All right. So let's continue here. I'm going to put in a step table. So the step table allows you to um, divide the time frame that you want to see into different steps. You can have as many columns as you want. Um, we're going to actually put in three columns here. Um, so we have here at the bottom, we have step period. So I'm going to put my step period at every five minutes. So it's going to return for me a value every five minutes within the last 30 minutes. First value, and that's what I'm going to go by. Second one is going to be the reactor temperature, and then the reactor level. So you can select the data um, here. We're going to do a step start time. Again, it's going to ask for a time format. I'm just going to use budget globalization. Reactor temperature, I'm going to select the step data. Give this object a name. And 
then from there, go to uh, analog tag, you're getting the react temp for the temperature. Um, of course, you can also change the appearance, um, adding units to this. We also have React level here, and adding that on there, finding the tags, getting the React level, and of course um, the units. Once that's done, you can also uh, customize the, you know, the table, put a name to it. So let's say this is the Reactor step table. And then also changing uh, the font, uh, color, size, text, all of that's available here. So let me change the uh, font size to 15 here for the title. And then you can go into each section and changing the font there as well. This is really hard to see, so let me also change the, uh, the color here for the text. All right. So that's the reactive step table. So let me go into and create the next table, which is our um, statistical uh, analysis table. And you can use this table to analyze tags um, so that you don't have to do your own calculations. Um, the Dream Reports will actually do it for you. So I select it from external history server. I can also select different uh, sources here. And I'm going to use discrete tags. So I'm going to analyze these, these uh, different discrete tags um, for con concentration pump and valve change the name here to concentration pump and concentration valve. And then uh, selecting from there um, the, um, the points that I want. So I'm going to select the, the running time, the downtime. You can also change the display caption here. Just put a space in there so it looks nice and as well as the system availability, how often that was available for the last 30 minutes. Going over here, you can also put the name. We're going to say uh, Reactor Operation Statistics. Name size, change it to 15. Make it look nice. That's okay. You can also adjust the table sizes here if it looks weird, uh, so that it looks a little bit better. And then also the last thing we're going to add on this is uh, the line graph. So let's go ahead and add a, uh, a nice big graph here. So as you can see, some of the tags are already selected. Um, the graph is pretty intuitive as well uh, in being able to, let, to select automatically for you the line style. So you can add different um, line style here. And then once you select a new tag, uh, which I'm going to select the uh, the temperature tag here, you'll get a different color for that automatically. So you can add that line, and uh, of course the color changes, and the more lines you add, the more colors you get. And this uh, graph, we're going to call it reactor temp uh, versus level. So from here, that's all we're going to do. Let's click OK to add that graph. It's a little bit smaller. All right, and that uh, pretty much completes our report. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, run this. So over here you can run your report, save changes. And uh, while that report is running, we have a um, reactor here in the background. So this is the reactor that's logging the information uh, for a historian. So um, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this by now. So we have different functions. Um, this is our caster graphic. Looks really nice and neat. And uh, here's our reactor report. So we can generate a uh, PDF just to see what that looks like and make sure everything is working. All right, so we have three uh, values here for a reactor. And then we have a step table here showing every five minutes increments for the last 30 minutes. We have an operation statistics, you know, how long it's been running, what's the downtime, um, what's the availability. 
as well as our uh, reactor graph. Okay. Another thing we can also do is uh, we can also add this report uh, into an Excel uh, folder, uh, Excel format. So to do that, we have to go back into um, our report settings. From here, we can go to report file format, enable the Excel, and also go to settings. So this opens up an Excel spreadsheet, and all the reports, um, all the different objects that we use are, are placed there. So we can place, um, just move them onto the screen uh, to display the different, you know, values, as well as the step table. Uh, as you can see, you can move them around, uh, as well as the auto stat table. So move it there. Yeah. So date and time, you can move this at the top. So kind of like that for the uh, Excel report. Press OK. I'll save the Excel report, and then we're going to go back here. We're going to open the Excel as well, and I'm going to run the project one more time to show the Excel side of it. And while that's running, we also have a um, have the ability to manually enter data with Dream Report. So here we have a um, a page that allows you to uh, select. Uh, so, for example, you know, in a water environment where you have a, uh, an operator recording information, it could be from the last couple of days. Once they select that information, they can enter a time, minutes, seconds here. Um, they can also click on now to get the, the current time, um, and then of course enter their collection <clears throat> number, and then put in the <clears throat> Excuse me, the pH values and a uh, piece of note that they want to put in. Save that data. Let's see, refresh it here. Hmm. Yeah, and you'll be able to see different. Um, Operator reports here, samples that we've put inside of the uh, the sample notes. So now let's go back to our report that we generated here. So here we can actually generate um, the PDF and the Excel report. So this is the Excel report. So as you can see here, it's, uh, it's a little compact. You can move, you know, move this around a little bit, make it look nice. But yeah, this is how you would enter the report into Excel. We also have the ability to um, generate the report on a web portal. So uh, here we configure Internet Information Services. And once that's configured, we can actually put this uh, report into a, a web format and uh, be able to view it on our devices. So give it a few seconds here to uh, Load the configuration. Maybe I need to run it. Oh, there you go. So we set it as the default website, configure. Configuration complete. Then once you open up your Internet Explorer, it will redirect you to the local report here. So you can see here I have my reactor report in a PDF format here. I can open it up. And again, you get the same information on a web portal. All right, and uh, that pretty much completes our demo portion. We have a couple of upcoming workshops here in uh, Southern California uh, for future, um, you know, kind of hands-on work. If you want to stop by, uh, we have Northern California as well. You can check all this information um, on our website at california.wonderware.com. We have a training session, and you can view all those uh, upcoming workshop information as well. So back to you, Kelly. Okay, great. Thanks, Tan. Um, so we are going to open up it up to questions. Um, if you do have questions, you can type them into the chat box or the Q&A box that's part of WebEx. Um, a few have come in during the webinar, Tan. The first one, um, and I know Mike is going to join us for the Q&A as well, so um, Mike, I'll go ahead and unmute you. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Mike. Hi, Kelly. Um, so, <laughs> hi there. Um, a few questions have come in. The first one is, um, how is Dream Report licensed? Uh, Mike, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, so Dream Report, the uh, the standard Dream Report licensing includes all of the 
drivers that Tan showed, which includes the Wonderware drivers as well as the open drivers for ODBC communication, OPC communication, uh, communication to CSV and Excel, and the internal uh, web driver, which is what you use for the manual data entry that Tan showed, where you can enter data into the, the web report and then have that saved to the database. So the standard Dream Report license covers all of the drivers, uh, including the, the third-party um, HMI SCADA drivers, uh, as well as Wonderware. There's also an option for Dream Report for Wonderware, and Dream Report for Wonderware uh, only gives you the Wonderware drivers. So it's a little bit cheaper. Um, you don't have the, um, the ODBC drivers for connecting to, a, say, for example, a standard SQL Server database. But um, if you're only going to be using Wonderware InTouch or the Wonderware Historian as a data source, then uh, the Wonderware drivers uh, will save you some money. And then uh, also you have uh, the web clients as, a, as an option. Uh, so if you choose to use the Dream Report web portal, um, you can purchase uh, web clients, and those are concurrent uh, clients. And so those are the, the, uh, the, uh, the two different types of licenses, the Dream Report for Wonderware, the standard Dream Report, and then the, uh, the web, optional web clients. Okay, thank you. Um, can you give an example, a simple explanation what is meant by step data or step table? Yeah, so step data, uh, step table is uh, uh, the same as if you're familiar with the uh, historian retrieval mode called cyclic. It's where you can define a time interval for data retrieval. So, uh, for example, you're, you're logging uh, temperature in that temperature is constantly changing, but maybe you only need to, for a report, look at that temperature uh, once every minute. That would be an example of a, of a step, so a one-minute step. So uh, another example would be maybe for a daily report, you need to look at 15-minute data, 15-minute flow data, for example. So uh, you'd have a daily report that just looks at the, the total flow every 15 minutes. Um, just uh, Another example would be if the monthly report, you need to look at daily data, I need to look at a daily total, a daily average, uh, daily min-max. Um, the step period would be one day, and so you would retrieve one value um, uh, every day over the course of the month, and that could be the, the first value in the day, the last value in the day, you nor know, a statistical function. All right. Can you schedule reports with SMTP delivery? Yeah, um, that would be um, the uh, the email uh, delivery, and so yeah, absolutely. Um, um, in the report uh, file format uh, settings, you can specify um, any email recipients, uh, as well as who the sender is and the subject, and any text that's included. And the report can be sent in in PDF and or Excel. All right. Um, I think that wraps it up. So um, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mike. Um, this webinar was recorded, so um, we will we'll be sending an email with the recording to you um, in just a couple hours, and it will be posted to our website and YouTube channel as well. So thank you, everyone, for joining, and have a great weekend.